Okay, in this video, I'm going to show you uh, a project that I was working for a long time now. Uh, it's been like three months since of working on this because I wanted to create, I want to make my grandma has an avatar, also has an AI uh, with her knowledge and her brain, her memories. So I can talk to her even though uh, when she die in the future, of course, things are going to happen. So for some people, this may be uh, kind of a weird thing and you're not agree with that or something. Uh, for me, it's, it, I think it's a very viable thing to use technology and use AI specifically to build these kind of things for ourselves. Maybe not like a product, but for ourselves. Uh, as a project for me, it's it's it, it's pretty good because I can communicate with her and I can ask her, for example, uh, questions or I can uh, tell her, hey, do you remember that receipt for the sandwich that you made when I was young? Uh, do you remember that story? Because I'm really bad at memory. And all those things that we get lost in the in, in time, sometimes uh, we can capture, I think, uh, by having an avatar or a virtual um, family person, I would say. So, And this can be applied to any person in your family or any person you know. Uh, I'm taking my family, for, for example, my grandma. And the process that I did here, it was pretty simple, but it was a, a lot of thought about how to connect these technologies together to make this to work for me. And still, there is a lot of improvement that can be done uh, in the future. At the end of the video, maybe talk about that. Uh, but I think so far it's really cool because I can interact with that avatar. The avatar replied back to me is in re almost real time and it's a 3D avatar. So it's not a picture that you see online. They don't look good. This is a real 3D avatar that you can integrate and then you can put a face or anything uh, that a 3D artist can design or you can download from, from, from the web. Okay, so I think and I hope that you enjoyed this video. It took me a lot of time. The only thing I ask you is just subscribe, watch the whole video. It's a lot of information that you may find helpful. Subscribe to the channel, give it a like so more people can see it. Let's go into the video. Hola, abuela, ¿cómo estás? Hola, Pipo, estoy muy bien. Gracias por preguntar. ¿Y tú cómo estás? ¿Qué travesura has estado haciendo? Abuela, ¿me puedes decir algo en inglés? Oh, hola, Pipo, mi nieto favorito. Claro que sí puedo decirte algo en inglés. ¿Estás listo? Aquí va. Hello, my dear grandson, Pipo. How are you doing today? Espero que te haya gustado. Te quiero mucho. ¿Me puedes decir cuál es tu nombre? Hola, Pipo, soy tu abuela, Acelia, allá a la costa. ¿Cómo estás, mi querido nieto? Abuela, ¿me puedes decir algo en italiano? Pipo, caro mío, te voy a venir a morir. ¿Y ¿Me puedes decir algo en japonés? Claro, Pipo, aquí tienes una frase en japonés. Daha o kidayo, que significa te quiero mucho. ¿Hay algo más en lo que pueda ayudarte, querido nieto Pipo? Abuela, ¿por qué me dices Pipo? Ay, mi querido Rubenito, te digo Pipo porque desde que eras chiquitito así te llamaba. Recuerdo que cuando eras bebé eras tan regordito y lleno de chispa que me parecías un pequeño Pipo. Y desde entonces se me ha quedado el cariñoso apodo para ti. Además, es una forma divertida y única de recordarte lo especial que eres para mí. ¿Te gusta que te llame Pipo? Abuela, can you talk to me in English and tell me a good phrase from Steve Jobs? Of course, my dear Pipo. Steve Jobs once said, Your time is limited. Don't waste it living someone else's life. It's a reminder to always be true to yourself and follow your own path. Keep that in mind, Pipo, as you navigate through life. I'm always here to support you. Okay, so I want to show you here on the whiteboard uh, the workflow that I came um, into my mind when I was trying to do this project. So the first thing is we have to consider, so we're starting with the person and we're going to, I was thinking about the interaction with a person when you have a conversation. So the first thing you do is from my side, if I'm talking to someone, I'm speaking to them and they need to have ears so they can understand and capture the output that I'm giving them. Okay, so the first thing, we're going to have ears. Now, this, uh, the ears that I implemented with uh, a whisper is an open source model that run on the computer. That basically what happened here is it will capture the audio file. So it will be the input will be the microphone getting to the computer. Then that audio will be converted to text because we'll need that text later to connect, um, to interact with the avatar. Then that text, we pass it to uh, GPT-4. So we put them on the front and send it to GPT-4. So in that point, what we're going to need is the brain. So GPT-4 is going to act as the brain in this um, section here. So it's going to interpret it and actually 
understand what's going on, what's happening here. So the brain has two parts. This first one is going to be GPT-4 or 3.5, whatever you're using. And so it's going to understand and then get back to you the answer in text as well. But then we have um, a section that I'm implementing now, which is the memory. Because aside of having all the knowledge that GPT-3.5 or GPT-4 has, you want to have a memory that it basically the person memory that you can relate to things like, for example, hey, grandma, uh, do you remember my name? How many brothers and sisters do you have? Where do you were born? Those kind of things, those kind of questions. So for that, what I'm creating now is a rack file or uh, using Pinecone with vectors. OK, we can use that with vectors, Pinecone, now uh, GPT with agents. This is pretty useful. You can upload a document with all the information of the person because the content length now is up to 128K. So you can put a lot of information there. So that's the brain. So when the person process the information that you give them, then it go back to you and it process it and it tries to have to speak. So we're going to need a mouth. OK, and for the mouth, that's a pretty weird mouth. But for the mouth, we're going to do is I was using a service called uh, 11 Labs. So basically, I took my grandma one hour and 30 minutes of, uh, of her talking about her life, her experience, those kind of things. And then I took that, clean up the audio. It was a very cool, uh, very good audio. And because she was only like speaking to me, uh, the, the model itself captured the ups and downs of the voice, uh, the fluctuations, those kind of things. So that's pretty, it was pretty good. And then what I do here is, so we get the answer from GPT-4 in text. That answer in text is sent to 11 Labs API to stream the audio that is being created back to me. So when I have that audio, then I pass that audio to the avatar. Because up to here, we have the audio and it's perfectly fine. It's pretty good. You can communicate with it. But I want to go a step forward and be able to have like an avatar with her face that I can communicate. Now, at that point, there was kind of different options here. The first one was to uh, this kind of models that you can from audio to photo and it move things in the photo, but it looks really bad. Most of them are like that. And the only one I could find, it was uh, NVIDIA Omniverse audio to face. Why NVIDIA Omniverse? Well, the first thing is, it's a 3D modeling platform, meaning that I can then use a, uh, give a, a couple pictures of my grandma to some uh, 3D artists, for example, they can create a 3D model and then it can easily connect it to, let's say if it's meta human on a reel, I can connect that to the avatar that I got here, um, Omniverse, and it will move like that. Second thing is uh, it gives you the flexibility because NVIDIA Omniverse comes already with lip sync and it comes with emotions. So emotions are pre-made. So you don't have to uh, make them manually, how to lift the lip or, or the, uh, the, the brown, things like that. You don't have to do it. It automatically does it um, for you, depending on the audio that is being received. With all these layers, uh, the lag that I'm getting right now is between three, five seconds, three to five seconds to get a response from the avatar, which is pretty good uh, considering all these things that are running on this. Okay. So here's a presentation here. Then I have a pipeline here, which has the avatar, the GPT-4 API, the 11 labs, things I was thinking and testing that I want to use, and the face simulation, which at the end was Omniverse. And here it was accomplishing by selecting the logic that I wanted to use. So the user asks a question, then a speech to text. Then the question gets to GPT-4. I'm using GPT-4 API and Pancom for that. Then the GPT-4 give me the answer. And it's go text to speech GPT-4 using 11 Labs API. And finally, I use the audio file to send to the avatar to perform the full uh, body and I mean face simulation. OK, so for that I'm face simulation, I'm using Omniverse. That's basically what I did. And I started implementing all the steps and connecting everything together. And it, everything came up pretty good. OK, so I want to show you here uh, really quick how the whole thing is working. So basically, the first thing I did was create uh, I create a couple Python scripts that communicate and I create a GUI interface so I can interact with 11 labs parameters like you can see here, stability, clarity, clarity and style exaggeration. Those are the parameters that they offer on this new version, version two of the models that they have online. And by the way, these models are uh, pretty good at any languages. The good thing, my, my, my grandma speak only Spanish, but I was able even to, uh, you see on the video that he, she was able to speak English, even with her accent, not like an English native uh, person, which is pretty good because she doesn't speak any English. 
So the first thing I have at the top is, is a selection. So this is connected to 11 labs and I select here the different voices. There is a lot of voices that are pre-made by them. And then I have uh, my abuela or grandma voice here and you have uh, two options. The first one is a clone voice, it's the fastest one. You can upload a file, I think uh, two or three minutes and it will be fine. And the second one is a longer file, like an hour recording. And this one was pretty good, but it, I, I'm not able to use it um, for now here on the app. So I selected the fast one, still pretty good. The second thing is the input device. In this case, I have a, a couple devices connected to the Ubuntu machine, machine uh, to the Ubuntu machine, and I was having a lot of issues uh, with getting the input. So I have to, I have to spend kind of a time too in that. But um, I'm using a microphone here, so I select that, and then I create two options. The first one is. I can easily write anything here and then get the output. The output is going to give me the, the text and it's going to give me an audio file. It's not going to connect to the avatar. All right. And then if I click uh, Habla con Abuela, which is means speak with grandma, if you click on that, it's going to open the microphone and then it's going to start recording and it's going to go through the process that I explained to you before on the whiteboard. Okay. So it goes through that and then it gives me the audio back. But the cool part here is that it will then send it to the avatar and then I can have a conversation. That's the way I have it. The only thing is for now, I just have to click every time I have to click here. If I want to start a conversation, we can change that later. But for now, and having this GUI app, it really helped me a lot because I only changed the code on the back end here. I change the code for different things that I do and then go back to the GUI and I have everything here. Okay. So that's basically how it was working. That's basically how it's working. And I said uh, it's running pretty good. I am using an RTX 4090, 64 gigs of RAM or 32 gigs of RAM and 16 core CPU. You need that amount of power if you need to run Omniverse. Now for the 11 laps and GPT-4, it's not running on your computer. It's taking it from the cloud uh, using APIs. That part is fine. You have to pay for that. And then uh, the Omniverse is running locally here and it uses a lot of power. So even though now, let's say I'm doing nothing, I just have the scene open. You can see here that my GPU utilization, let's check it out. My GPU utilization, let's see. It's 51%. I'm using six gigs of memory and I'm using 180 watts of power and I'm doing nothing right now. Basically, nothing is running on the computer. So it's a kind of heavy load task. So you have to consider those things. You need to have a powerful computer, and I, that's all. Uh, and that's all that's happening on the on the on the machine itself. Okay, so there you have it. That's all. Uh, that's the project for my grandma that I was working, and I mentioned it in a couple of videos before. I hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know in the comments below what you think about it. Let's have a conversation there. Uh, share the video with uh, all the people and give it a like so more people can see it. I, this is a kind of a, a few improvements that can be done here, especially when it comes to models running on the cloud. Like GPT-4, it can be replaced, for example, with Llama 2 or Mistral or any of these new models open source that can run locally on the machine. That can be done because we can implement the rack or the memory and then with that local model running on your computer. That's one thing. And then the other thing that I would like is uh, I was looking for a model that can uh, create a clone of voice in a very useful way and that actually sounds good. Now, I downloaded a couple of projects online and there's nothing as good as 11 laps at the moment. So that's why I was using 11 laps. So I hope something come up on that. And if we have like a, a local model, a, a local voice cloning model, that would be amazing. So everything can be running on the computer. Okay. Uh, those are the things that I think can be improved. And of course, uh, maybe a, a React app that we can interact with this uh, interface and finally make the, the 3D face of the, my grandma, which is the very easy part. You just, I will send it to somebody. A 3D artist will give me back to me. And then it's easy connection between uh, universe. It's a very easy connection between Unreal Engine using MetaHuman, for example, and then Omniverse. So I really enjoyed the project. I hope you too. And uh, you enjoy watching the video. So that's all. That's it for today. Thank you for watching. I see you on the next video. Bye bye. ¿Te gustó? Sí.